I'm going to be using three quarter inch plywood for the majority of this. And it's almost like I'm pulling this sheet out of the 1950s. It's that much more expensive than it was just two years ago when I bought it. And my shop is not very big, so it's always kind of a struggle handling full sheets. Normally, I take them outdoors and I break them down into more manageable size. But it's still winter here, and there's like two feet of snow outside my door. Luckily, I've developed a bit of a system for doing this. I lift one end of the sheet up and set it on my table saw, and then I go and grab the other end and swing it over and lay it flat on my workbench. And now that it's cut in half, it's a lot easier to handle on my table saw. I'm gonna cut it into strips that are five and a quarter inches wide. Then I can carefully mark the pieces that I need and bring it over to my miter saw and cut those two rough lengths. And now I'm gonna talk a little bit about where this shelf is going and how I'm gonna build it. It's going in my stairwell and it's sitting on this wall that's sloping down that kind of follows the stairs. So the first thing I need to do is measure this angle. Then I use that angle to set my handheld circular saw to make this cut. And the reason why I'm making it freehand is that it's quicker that way because this is really a compound cut. There's two angles involved here. There's the angle that we already measured where it meets the wall. Then there's the other angle where the corner is not 90 degrees. Also, you can see that with the strip up tight against the wall, it's not right into the corner on that side where the arrow's pointing, so it needs to be scribed to fit there too. And then here's how it fits after I got that done. Up at that end, it's looking pretty good, but when we look down the length of it, we can see that there's a gap in the middle, so I still need to do a little bit more scribing. And to make scribing it a little bit easier, I'm actually going to back cut that means that I'm going to make a rabbit cut along that edge, leaving just a little bit on top to plane away so that I can get this piece fitting tight to the wall. After I had that one fitting tight to the wall, I can lay out where I need to cut dados for the uprights. And I should talk a little bit about the way that I'm building this. This is actually the hard way. Whenever you build something like this, you have two choices. You can either build it in or you can build it as a complete unit like in the workshop, and then bring it to where you're going to put it and just install it. Building it in generally takes a lot more time because you're doing it one piece at a time and you're fitting each piece to the wall. These dados that I'm cutting don't have to be deep. I'm only using them to help line up the parts accurately. And I need to get those in place so that I can actually scribe those to the wall as well. And of the three, I only had to scribe one piece. And to scribe that, I'm not going to be using the plane this time. I'm going to be doing a freehand on my table saw. Now, before I go any further, I want to get these sanded and get at least one coat of polyurethane on all the parts, even before I cut any more dados. It's going to be a lot easier to paint these parts before the unit is assembled and on the wall. When the first coat dried, I could finish cutting the dados and the parts. These are actually the uprights that you saw earlier that I had described to the wall, at least one of them. And I'm using a very simple but very accurate jig that I made for cutting these dados. With all that done, I could start installing it. For real this time, I glued it down to that ledge underneath, and I also glued it straight to the wall in several locations, and that's what's holding it in place. And because this is not very deep and it's sitting on that ledge, the glue will be more than strong enough to hold this in place. The next day, I could take those sticks down and finish putting shelves in. And of course, it's not quite finished at this point. I still need to put some solid wood nosing on the front of that, and that's to cover the plywood. So I'm gonna go into my covered lumber rack and pull out a piece of maple to cut down to make the trim to go on there. This doesn't have to be fancy or big. I'm just 
cutting these into strips that will be the same thickness as the plywood after I plane them down. And then I can set my table saw to 30 degrees and cut a bevel into one edge. And that will be all the decoration I'll want for this. And everything else on this is planar smooth, but that edge that I just cut needs to be cleaned up and I'll use a scraper to do that. The way that this trim is tapered makes it very difficult to use nails to fasten it. So I'm gonna be using biscuits and glue instead. and I have these homemade edge clamps to hold it in place until the glue dries. What I'm touching on the end here is where the trim is kind of bent down a little bit. So I'm gonna jump ahead and cut the thinner piece of nosing that'll go on the vertical parts just to prop that up and make sure that it's level while the glue dries. In two places on this, the trim wraps around the corner and returns to the wall and that's what I'm cutting here. And I'm not going to bother trying to put a biscuit in this. It's too small. The tape will hold it in place until the glue sets. And then when the glue did set, I could sand off the squeeze out and clean up that corner. And here's what it looks like with all of the trim parts cut and fitted and glued in place. As you can see, all the upright parts have tape holding them on. As long as everything fits tight together, then that's all you really need. And here it is from another view. You can really see that bevel trim from here and how it returns to the wall. Like I said earlier, this is the hard way to do this kind of shelf. It does have that advantage of having that built-in look that you only get from something that doesn't have a back that actually uses the wall as the back of the cabinet. And also you would say whatever material you would use for the back. And then why did I build these crooked shelves to begin with? To put my DVD and Blu-ray collection in. And if you're interested in seeing what I put on the shelves, I made another video on my audio channel. There's a link in the description. You can go and watch that.